Hey guys, it's Hayes with CheatSheetPros.com. Today is Tuesday, June 28th, and we got some sports betting picks we're going to take a look at on the MLB Cheat Sheet. And for me, I am on PTO until July 11th, so I'll probably have a lot of content flooding out. As you know, summers are extremely busy for me, so when I'm on PTO, I like to get a lot of bets, props, and all that good stuff out. So the first game I want to take a look at is Baltimore plus 155 against Seattle. So when we're looking at the sheet, I'll kind of bounce around with the mouse so you can kind of see what I'm looking at. So one of the things that jumped out at me is the uh, Baltimore Orioles are second in our last 10 power ranking, and that kind of surprised me. And they've actually been doing really well. They've won five of the last six games, so 7-0, 4-0, 4-1, 6-2, and then 9-2 against Seattle last night. So they're doing really well. I believe they had a winning month of June. Um, and then you can see their lineup's doing really well. Hayes is hitting 287, Mancini 281, Mount Castle 271. Bottom half struggling, but either way, they're getting the job done. You can see the pitcher here is not named yet, but I believe it's going to be Robbie Ray. And then over here, um, we're looking at Seattle. They've won five of the last seven, losing the last two, but these five wins, I mean, they beat a really bad Angels team by two, by a one, and then Oakland, who's awful, they beat up on twice and then squeaked by two to one, so not as impressive for me. Um, Lineup-wise, decent, but the bottom half, just as with Baltimore, they're struggling. These guys, 199, 129, 223, 165, but again, the lineup's not confirmed, so keep an eye on that. So I want to take a look at the two pitchers, because after I look at the teams, I want to look at the pitchers and see kind of what everybody's doing. So let's go ahead and take a look at Dean first. I'm going to go ahead and type him in. And you can use any website to go look at pitching stats. I just happen to have Cruncher pulled up, so I'm going to go ahead and use that. So you can see his last three starts, he's done really well. He's allowed 0, 0, and 1 earned run. Um, so he had 5.2 against the Sox, no earned runs. Six innings against Tampa, no earned runs. Five innings against the Royals and one earned run. So over his last 5, 10, 15, 16.2 16 innings, he's only allowed one earned run. So And Baltimore's red hot right now, so I think he's more than serviceable. And we're getting a lot of odds because Robbie Ray is coming out on the other side. But Baltimore's doing well. I don't really think they're going to struggle as much. And you can see one run, one run, zero run. Uh, but again, that's against the Angels who really only have two guys in the lineup that are decent. Everybody else is struggling. Oakland's horrible, so I'm not really impressed by these two. Now, holding Boston to seven innings, no runs, that's good. But then Houston tagged him for three, and look at this. He faced Baltimore back on June 1st and went five innings, gave up four runs, walked three. So Baltimore did get to him, so that's interesting. So plus 155, um, I believe we only need to win this 39.2% of the time for this to be a profitable play. So that's one that I do like. Um, let's flip down. My second game that really jumps out at me is going to be Houston over the New York Mets. Now, I've pretty much been off Houston because they've been struggling a bit here. And you can see on our model, we have a slight 3% advantage. So this is projecting Vegas to be around minus 117 um, I believe 120 is what I got it on my book this morning. And then we got it. It should be about 130, 135. We have minus 132. And what you can see here, Houston's jumped up to number one in the last 10 power rankings. And then Mets, they've slid down to 12th. And we've got good numbers here for Houston. They're number three in runs per game over the last two weeks. Um, number three in home runs. Number three in WRC+. Plus. Um kind of up and down. Um, as far as the Mets, they, they're, you know, lose, win, lose, lose, win, win, lose. So a little bit all over the place. I mean, they beat Miami in two of three, but again, Miami's not that strong of a team and 5-3, 5-3, and then lose 3-2. Nothing really impressive there. They did play Houston twice already on June 21st and 22nd, and they lost 8-2 and 5-3. Um, and then again, you know, they beat up on Miami a little bit, beat up on Milwaukee that's struggling. So they've already lost two to Houston. And to see this line at minus 115, minus 120, I was kind of shocked. I thought that was pretty low. So I wanted to come in and take a look at it. Um, so we have Carrasco and Valdez. So these are the two pitchers we're going to take a look at. Now, when I'm looking at the cheat sheet, um, both bullpens, 9-6, they're good. Both teams, you know, 1st and 12th, they're good. Um, I would expect Houston to be more minus 140 
maybe minus 150. So at minus 120, that's pretty good. Um, you can see here Carrasco, there's only 66 at bats, but Houston's batting 303. So that gives us a monster BVP numbers off of him. And you can see here he's got a 442 ERA, 353 XFIP, and allowing a 269 average. Um, slightly better at home. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to take a look at his game logs. Um, Valdez, he's more than manageable. He's got a 290 ERA, XFIP slightly higher. Uh, but he has been really good on the road. Look at his split here. So his ERA, he has a 421 at home, but a 195 ERA on the road. So he's more than manageable for us on the road. And then he's allowing a 290 batting average at home, but only 145 on the road. So I think taking a hotter Houston team with a decent pitcher and a good split's a good way to go here. And then let's go ahead and take a look at Carrasco, and I'll show you some of the things. Well, here, we'll look at Valdez first since we just got done talking about him. So looking at his game logs, you know, he's gone 6, 6, 6, 6, 9, 7, 7. So, you know, he's going 6 to 7 innings pretty consistently, and he usually doesn't give up more than 3 earned runs. Now, that's not elite, but that's decent. So 3, 3, 2, 2, 1, 3, 1, 1, 2, 3, 0. So he's pretty good at limiting the run. So we want to take a look at Carrasco and see, um, is he someone that's going to allow less than three earned runs and keep this a close game? Well, the first thing you see here is minus 4.95 fantasy points, eight fantasy points. So he's struggling a little bit here. And what jumps out at me is he just faced Houston on the 22nd, only lasted 2.1 innings, gave up five earned runs. So this right here is a huge red flag on why I like Houston. So Valdez, pretty decent. Um, Carrasco, struggling a little bit, but just faced Houston and got tagged for five earned runs and only two innings. Now that was at Houston, so take that with a grain of salt. Prior to that, he gave up three runs to Miami. Um, a horrible Angels team tagged him for five runs and only 4.2 innings. So I'm going to lean Houston here, minus 120. I think that line is too low, and I think there's a lot of value there. So let's move on to the next game that we like. So the other one is going to be the San Francisco Giants and the Detroit Tigers. And let me find them. All right, must be down here at the bottom. So San Francisco and Detroit. All right, it's one of our later games. The wind's blowing out at 12 miles an hour, so that's interesting if your total's better. Um, neither team here is really good. You can see over the last 20, Detroit is 7-13, and 13, San Francisco 11-9, and nine. both teams four and six. Um, nothing really jumps out at me initially looking at this, but Vegas has the San Francisco pegged as a pretty good favorite, but I don't want to lay that. You're seeing a lot of advantage here on the Detroit side. But when I dig into this game, the bet that I'm going to go with is the San Francisco run line because I can get plus 115. So I can get plus money. So you only need to win that about 45% of the time. I don't love it, but it is something that I am going to bet today. You can see here, San Francisco's lost four of the last five. Now, given the two against Atlanta, that's a tough team. I don't know what the hell happened against Cincinnati, but they lost two of three. Um, last 10 power rankings, you can see they're pretty close, 21 versus 19. And Detroit's kind of the same way. They've lost four of the last six games, so neither team doing real great. But when you come down here and you look at the pitching side, we have Rodon versus Scooball and or Scooble, and he was really good to start the year if you look at his numbers he's got a 363 era an xfip of 310 allowing a 244 average so we're going to look at him and then rodon's the same 27 era 311 xfip allowing a 203 average so you can see both pitchers are good both hitting teams are not so good so why do we like the giants run line well when i came over here and i took a look at the pitchers so we're going to look at Rodon first. So he's got three fantastic starts. So three 3x starts if you're playing fantasy. And look at the teams he faced. He faced the Dodgers and then he faced Atlanta. Pitt, I don't really care about. But Atlanta and the Dodgers, those are ones that kind of raised my eyebrows. So against the Dodgers, he went six innings, no earned runs. Pitt, eight innings, no earned runs. And Atlanta, at Atlanta, seven innings, one earned run. So in his last 21 innings, he's only allowed one earned run. So Rodon is really good right now. I'd say he's in excellent form. And then you come over here and you look at Scooble, and you can see he has three rough starts here. 
Now, Toronto, Texas, Boston, those are good teams. I'd say that's the equivalent to about what Rodon's faced. So against Toronto, he went four innings, gave up four earned runs. Texas got tagged for five earned runs in five innings. And then Boston, six earned runs in 4.2 innings. So he had a good stretch right here. Everybody was talking how great he was. And then he had some mediocre up and downs. And then all of a sudden, he's given up three, four, five, and six earned runs. So I like taking San Francisco here because they have a huge pitching advantage. Um, since the team is struggling and they've lost four or five, I don't like laying any type of a money line. I'm going to go run line here at plus 115 and just risk a unit and win some plus money. So that's the third game that I have on tap. And the next one is going to be Texas. I'm going to lay the run line here against Kansas City once again. Um, you can see here, so yesterday we really liked the Texas run line. It was either plus 125 or plus 155, and they end up winning 10 to 4. Um, they pretty much rolled it. It was a huge pitching advantage for Texas, and so that one ended up holding up for us. We really like that. And I'm going to go back to it again today. I don't like it as much as I did yesterday, but they have another advantage. So last 10 power ranking, we have 10 versus 25, so clear advantage for Texas. And Kansas City, you know, they're just kind of putting along here. They've lost three of four. They lost the last two against Oakland and then got beat by six last night. The reason I'm going run line over the money line here is Kansas City at home. They're getting beat on the run line. They're, it's 24 and 13. So they're getting beat quite a bit. And if you look at the last six losses, I love having the last 12 game log on this cheat sheet. You can see they lost by six, by two, by two, by five, by four, by two. So when they lose, they usually get beat by two or more runs and we can get plus money. I think it's plus 115 again on the run line. So we're gonna go ahead and go with that. Um, and then when you come down here, we got uh, Heasley versus John Gray. John Gray, decent. Um, ERA around four, XFIP slightly better, 222 average. Kansas City's bullpen ranks dead last. And then um, let me flip over here and take a look at the pitchers. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to take a look at the KC pitcher for Kansas City. So um, he's flashed some good starts. So here at Baltimore at home, he went seven innings, one hit, no earned runs. So a one hitter through seven, that's fantastic. And then he only gave up three earned runs to Houston, so that's really good. But his last two starts, he has nine innings, gave up six earned runs, uh, two walks per start, and that was against San Francisco and LAA. So he's a little bit up and down. Like, I don't mind him. He's decent, but I think Texas can get to him. And then on the other side, we have John Gray. And John Gray has actually been been doing really well and Kansas City is not a powerhouse team by any means so you can see here these greens these are good and fantasy point start so he went seven innings one run 12 K's against Tampa Bay um, Cleveland tagged him but every pitcher has a down day and then he only allowed one earned run to the White Sox through six he shut out Detroit through seven and then faced Philly and only allowed two earned runs so Gray's doing pretty decent so I like Gray to limit the production for Kansas City here and Texas to try to squeak away with another run line win for us. Um, a couple other games that you can consider if you want to go ahead and add them, and I haven't looked at any totals yet, but the Chicago White Sox jump out, so they are a dog. Um, you can see here, Chicago is struggling. I mean, they've got a powerhouse team. I don't know what they're doing, but they've lost four. No, they've lost five of six games um, to Baltimore nonetheless for the majority and then the angels they lost to four to three last night but when you come down here and you look at the pitching matchup there's a clear advantage for chicago with johnny cueto um so we're going to take a look at those two pitchers i mean this lineup for the white Sox: you have tim anderson you have who's batting 339 you have vaughn batting 314 roberts batting 289 abreu batting 267 i mean they've got some studs in there you still got Pollock burgers breaking out this year he's doing really well he does have a high strikeout rate and then the bottom three guys are just kind of blah but Silith um only 16.1 innings pitch so we're going to go look at his game logs but an ERA close to five allowing a 274 average and almost an even split home and away but allowing a 333 batting average at home so far so we're going to take a look at that and then you got Cueto 
everybody kind of knows who he is. Um, he's about a sub four ERA pitcher, kind of in that three nine range. So you can see his ERA is three point one nine. On the road, it's only one point oh eight. But as always, I'm an XFIP guy. That's going to tell you more of the true story. Three nine nine and three six two on the road. That's pretty good. His batting average allowed is two forty, and then on the road it's one ninety five versus two eighty three at home. So. Cueto on the road, 108 ERA, 195 batting average allowed. So that's a clear advantage looking at that. So I want to go in and look at some game logs. So looking at Cueto, let's see. He faced Baltimore, gave up three runs, uh, went to Houston. Went, this was impressive. At Houston, seven innings, only two hits, no earned runs. Um, faced Texas, three earned runs, three earned runs versus the Dodgers, three earned runs versus Toronto. Man, he's had a tough schedule. Houston... Texas, Dodgers, Toronto. So Cueto's doing pretty decent. I'd say, you know, he's in decent form right now. He might give up two or three earned runs, but that's not the end of the world. But then you've got Sileth on the, or Sileseth, however you say that. Um, so you can see here this red, he has struggled. So he went 4.1 against Oakland, who's horrible, gave up three earned runs. Went 4.1 against Toronto, only gave up two. So that, that's a decent start. But then his last start at Philadelphia, 1.2 innings, gave up four runs and got pulled. So I don't mind taking a shot here. I mean, the White Sox eventually got to win, right? I mean, they're four and six in their last 10 games. I mean, and you're getting plus money on them. So that's what I like. So I don't mind taking the plus money on them and, you know, sprinkling a little bit on them. And one of the other ones that I was originally going to put in the sheet and then I kind of pulled out is Pittsburgh. They are plus 110 plus 115, somewhere around there. Um, and you can see here, we've got an advantage on them. We have them as possibly being favored, minus 135 to minus 140. So you can see here, last 10 power rankings, both of these teams are 14th and 16th. And Washington, they've been doing well. They've picked up some wins here. So they've won six of the last eight games. Now, uh, Baltimore split. They did knock off Texas twice. And then they beat Pittsburgh, who's not a really good team. Um, Pittsburgh here, they've lost four in a row and then five of last six if you want to get technical. But they had a little bit of a win here, beat, knocking off the Giants and then demolishing the Cubs twice. So I think these two teams are equal. I just can't stomach laying money on Washington with Patrick Corbin. So Corbin here has 73 innings pitched this year, ERA of 6.6. .6. 179 whip and allowing a 322 batting average. 322 and the 25th ranked bullpen behind him. So I can just go against him and get plus money. That is very appealing for me. Jose Quintana on the other side, solid. You know, I don't mind him at all. He's got an ERA of 3.6, XFIP of 3.86, and allowing a 254 average. Both bullpens are terrible. But I think this is more of a 50-50 a game. Either team could win, but you're giving me plus money to go against Corbin. That's something I would lean at taking a shot on. So Corbin here, he's allowed three, two, four, three, seven, three, five, five earned runs. He's definitely not shutting anyone down. And let me see, I don't think he's faced. Okay, so he did face Pitt, but it was way back in April. Gave up a couple earned runs in five innings. So decent, not great. And then on the other side, you have Jose Quintana. Let's see what he's been up to. So Quintana's allowed two, three, four, four, two, zero, two, zero, zero. So he had a really good stretch here of these games. Faced the Dodgers twice, gave up zero and two earned runs. Padres, Cardinals, and Cincy, zero, two, zero. So he's a decent pitcher. And then he got tagged for four against Detroit. Atlanta, he gave up four. Atlanta's really good, so I'm fine with that. Three against San Francisco. And then he faced the Cubs and only gave up two. So he's decent. So I think, you know, Pittsburgh's got a even shot at winning this game. So our model has him about 55%. Vegas has him at 49%. So that gives us a little bit of an advantage on Pittsburgh. So that's what I'm looking at for the day, guys. So let me know what you guys like. Good luck.